Hi, uh, how do you do? Uh, my name is Huang. I'm from Audiovisual Vietnam Magazine. Yes, please, okay. go ahead. Yes, so first of all, let's talk about AVM Audio's branding position in the current high-end market. So mm -hmm. what can you share about? The company started in 1986 and the mission was to offer more quality or more things um, than the competition did for a similar price. So that means more build quality, easier to operate, more functions, more power, more musicality uh, and all of that. This motto has still remained. So the idea is that we want to uh, offer this for a price level which is still affordable, not super, super exclusive expensive, also not cheap. Yeah? So it's kind of a middle uh, thing that we start at a, um, uh, at a price where it is still a lot of money, but you can afford it. Now we have three product lines, so you can pr practically choose from having, uh, for instance, a 30.3 or a Evolution line and an Ovation line. So every time you get more sound quality, but you have to spend a little bit more. Um, but I think what we like to do is we like to bring the music back to the people. So let's talk about like some of the outstanding technical like, technologies of ABM Audio. Mm -hmm. so, so can you uh, give us an example of some of those outstanding uh, advancements? Yeah, um, there are many, many, but let me just pick um, one or two or maybe three. <laughs> and uh, the way um, how the company started, it was uh, practically the first company that made MOSFET power amplifiers or integrated amplifiers. Making MOSFET amplifiers is a little bit more complicated uh, instead of using bipolar, but it has certain advantages in the sound. It makes it more detailed, faster in the response, um, but difficult. Um, so AVM was the first uh, company that really managed to make a good sounding, warm sounding, round sounding uh, MOSFET amplifier. That was in 1986 and um, it, it had a couple other um, very good ideas in between. Uh, for instance, uh, all-in-one systems. AVM started already making all-in-one systems in 1995. Uh, in, at that time, everybody was building separate components. The, big, uh, the systems got bigger and bigger and bigger, and which led to the, the effect, uh, because the systems were so large, they were banned out of the living room. Uh, then they had to go into a separate li uh, listening room, and uh, AVM back then already had uh, the idea to bring back the music into the living room. So just by making a one chassis component. That was called a CD receiver back then. Yeah? And then uh, one other big advancement was um, to combine, for instance, tube stages uh, with uh, switching amplifiers in the output stage. Yeah? So a hybrid uh, amplification. Um, you get the sound from the tubes and the power from the switching amplifier. Um, also uh, very unique. And then, of course, what is uh, the most visible today is we have these high performance all-in-one units where you think, ah, oh, a, uh, a one box, uh, what should it do? But this was the trick. You had to bring all a high-end system into one uh, single chassis and make it sound a much, much bigger system which is also more, uh, more expensive. Uh, and that's the idea. Bring this performance into one box, into the living room, and be able to pay it. Uh, you can tell also with a little remote control how, how easy it is. Yeah? And um, what you can do is with a, uh, you will find the same thing on our app. Very easy. Um, it is self-explanatory. You just open the app, and then you can maneuver uh, step by step through the different um, stages. And also we make it very comfortable for you. For instance, that when you make a setup for your uh, turntable, 
you can do all the adjustments uh, for the cartridge and for the turntable you can do on uh, on the app for instance when you want to change the load or the um, uh, the gain or the subsonic for your turntable you can do this on the app which is very very unique How would you describe AEM Audio's development strategy in the near future? R&D, I think, is the most important thing that we can do. So we, um, in, during the Corona years, we invested a lot of money uh, doing all these R&D things uh, in-house. And uh, we have the latest software um, to do this because this, the leading company for 3D uh, simulations and everything comes from the town where we are, you know, which is a coincidence. Yeah, and it's the most. By the way, it's one of the most expensive softwares, uh, but we need it so we can uh, work very precise and very quick. Yeah, we can react very quickly, and we can also communicate with this software. Uh, we can send the production data to our vendors. Very easy. Yeah. Sounds very easy. We had to learn a lot, we had to invest a lot. We have invested a lot in the software, in the streaming software, because we all know this is the fastest changing, um, this is the fastest changing uh, where we see the most upgrades. Um, you see, we, we're getting higher resolutions, new formats, new streaming um, um, portals. Uh, everything is, is becoming easier with uh, with even nicer apps, which work much more easy than before. At the same time, we also have to take care of all the vinyl. Yeah, we have our own turntables, and uh, the turntables um, account for 50, almost 15 percent of um, our global sales, uh, which is amazing. Yeah? Um, because people love to return to vinyl and I think they want to enjoy the sound quality of vinyl, which is of course a lot better than MP3. Yeah? So also the young people um, are buying turntables, of course some lesser expensive uh, turntables, but th because they want to enjoy uh, the vinyl. You see um, in the Corona year, hi-fi and music systems came back into the living rooms. And um, we are enjoying uh, a really steady growth in, in our business. We see a lot of uh, more visibility. People like to come back. They rediscovered uh, their hobby uh, during the Corona years to enhance something for the living room. The company is expanding rapidly. So we have built a second factory last year. And um, we see also more and more uh, products uh, at the lower end of our price range. So this will be, this is the next biggest step that we take our existing technology and uh, we make them a little bit smaller. Um, of course, we uh, also the housing finishes, everything is a little bit reduced, but this one uh, is still in and uh, it is the same functionalities and it has the same sonic signature like the big uh, AVM. So we want to make systems which are becoming more and more affordable, which is, which is the original message of the company. Yeah, exactly. That's the idea. So talking about like the, the turntables, so we know that AVM audio started with an amplifier. Mm -hmm. So, what made AVM design and to start to manufacture the turntables? And also, could you share some of the advantages of uh, AVM turntables? Yeah, um, good question. Uh, it started at a time uh, when my son uh, turned 18. Uh, I asked him, "Hey, what do you? What's your wish for your 18th birthday?" And usually, I was expecting something like car or motorcycle or something. Uh, but no, he said, yeah, I want a turntable. Of course, I can go to a shop and buy a turntable, um, but I had different ambitions. So I, I said to myself, yeah, as a father, and then uh, I started, uh, and then I said, hey, ha, good wish, um, I'll make him one. Uh, sounded easy 
turned out to be really difficult. And um, so I sat down, it took me quite a while to figure it out. Um, and, um, and then kind of hand built him one turntable. So inclusive, in, inclusive uh, the, uh, the plinth, the motor, the motor electronics, uh, built an own tone arm, the first prototype, uh, even made the first cartridge uh, myself. So completely hand built, a uh, unique piece. Um, and then at the birthday celebration, we take it out of the box and everybody was looking like, how do you do this? Where, where, can, where can I buy this? And uh, said, yeah, you can't buy it because this is the only one. Uh, and um, so I put it aside for some time and maybe two, three years later, uh, restarted to do certain developments, liked it. And you, you have to learn a lot. Yeah? It's like a uh, turntable seems simple, just a platter, turning an arm. Um, but in reality, it's a very, very delicate and complicated precision instrument. Then I came up uh, with the first two models and everybody said, oh, you're completely crazy um, making turntables. But um, I found it intriguing to make a nice sounding turntable. I could not find the tone arm that I really wished for. So um, we had our own development, the 10 inch tone arm, the larger turntable, nine inch in the, in the smaller one. Um, and also made it, make it aesthetically outstanding. Again, the motto, deliver more in all aspects than anybody else. Um, with a blue light uh, underneath and where well, everybody said oh, blue light <laughs> and then uh, but the tone arms really made a difference and because the tone arms can carry also very complex and heavy systems mm mc uh, not a problem it was a surprise to many to see because they said hey yeah udo makes nice things we know you know but Technolo technology was the key because also the drive mechanism, especially in the large turntable with the ellipsocentric uh, belt drive, which eliminates uh, torque and reduces friction. It reduces, um, um, it reduces vibration, uh, can absorb a lot of uh, vibration. Uh, people love that and discovered, wow, it's a good sounding turntable as well. And um, this is why we got a lot of awards uh, for this all around the world as well. Yeah, so, so we're not limited only to electronics, but we're, I'm always curious to see, ah, maybe there's something, something else. Uh, and um, of course, when we do a turntable, we don't go there and just send somebody a label to put it on. It has to be AVM through and through. It has to deliver more than anybody else for the same amount of money uh, in the market. So, one last question. So, what is, uh, what are some of AVM Audio's expectations for the audio market in Vietnam? And um, what, what do you think, in your opinion, what are some of your opinion, uh, what are some of the products that are in the mainstream in the market currently? Yeah, a lot of questions in one. <laughs> Tricky. <laughs> Don't worry, we have time. <laughs> um, I, I see that Vietnam in, in many aspects is uh, one of the fastest growing markets in, in Southeast Asia. Um, look into the industry, the airline industry, shipping industry, tourism. Um, so, um, uh, people are working very hard and they are also, of course, making good money uh, for this. So, in Vietnam, suddenly you see uh, a, a large class of people who can afford to spend some, uh, some more for high-tech. And uh, the good thing is, this is what I like here, is people are, um, have the freedom to, uh, they are curious. Yeah, they want to try out this, they want to learn a lot about new technologies, they want to see uh, what it is. And at the same time, Vietnamese are very picky on the quality. Yeah, so um, you cannot, uh, you, you have to sell top quality uh, in this country. So you cannot sell them any second best. 
And uh, so this is exactly my ambition, uh, what to do. Exactly what I like. Um, this is why I'm confident that we can do, um, we can build a large market share here. We have a lot of products in three different uh, levels. We, can, we have um, pretty much an entry level, high end system, and you can go very high uh, in our systems, also price wise, power and other things. So I'm really, really confident uh, that we will uh, find a lo lot of good, not only customers, but also fans for the brand. And, um, and I think uh, the people here can listen very well. They, can, they know very well, oh, this is a good sound and this is not so good and this is, I don't want to know. You, you see, Vietnamese, and uh, that's what I mean, they're learning very fast. They're, and they're also learning very fast about the music, uh, what they need to expect. And I'm happy to fulfill this and also help to go along on that path uh, here in this market. Yeah, so eh, I have a super partner here. Hi, <laughs> he's, he's working very hard uh, uh, with this. Um, and I hope also in Germany, um, over 35 years ago, AVM started as a very, very small company. After more than 35 uh, years, it's still there. And in Germany and in Europe, it's one of the biggest brands uh, that there is. Yeah, which was a long, long journey and a lot of work. Um, we'd like to do this. Now we can travel again, so uh, we can come and visit you. Um, because the last three years, three years we have lost. Uh, it's like we couldn't, we could, couldn't come here. We couldn't educate um, our partners. We could not train the staff here. We could not talk directly. Um, so I think we uh, have a very, very good hope that we can catch up now, um, especially with the new products, uh, you, which we, uh, you will see in the next three, four months uh, from us to come here. Really hope to see that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for answering questions. Uh, so this concludes our interview. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.